you mm-hmm. see. Yeah. It's innocence. The perspective of innocence just meets everything as it is and doesn't want them to be any different. Doesn't want to change them. Yeah. Just um, it is, what is it sort is. of wise and loving without yeah. trying. Yeah. And so then this alchemical thing happens. Is what I call this alchemy. Is just by them being in your presence it's like that vibration goes through them because it doesn't set off any of their defenses yep. or ego yep. so then it, 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 it connects with their innocence which is still there yep. and then it invites it out to play yes All right. it's beautiful yeah it's a day I'm hanging in the sunshine you should hit me with the splash gun so I cool them. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> ah. So as I was filming this video about these golf balls disappearing, my buddy who bought the house, Travis, just showed up. I'm gonna give him a session, but so what's up dude? Tell me about the golf balls. Um well this like building we're sitting in right now is on top of that spot. Mm-hmm. that you used as target practice. <laughs> so when I looked at an aerial view of this property, you know, when I was thinking about buying it, uh-huh. what I saw looking down on the aerial view was a bullseye uh-huh. mowed into the grass <laughs> yeah. that centered around this spot. Yeah. And I didn't have any idea what that was about. Yeah. And so when we, <laughs> first, when we first started coming here, when you when you lived, you know, you were still living here, uh-huh. and we were in the process of buying it, my daughter told me, I said, can you come over and help me paint the shed? Mm-hmm. And uh, she said, I will, but I'll only do it for three hours. And I said, why? It's going to take longer than three yeah, hours. Yeah. And she said, if, I, if I'm on that property for more than three hours, it makes my heart hurt and I want to cry. Wow. Wow, you never told me that. And that's three years ago. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and a teenager that's like I got 17 years all old. over my body. Yeah, she's like she's 17 years old, and she's noticing every time I go over there, my heart hurts and I want to cry. Yeah, wow. So that immediately told me there's something going on with the location. Yeah. Right. So then I started yeah. to notice when I walk around, when I just walk around, and when I walk across this particular spot, I could just feel something like. At first, it felt like gravity got stronger. Yeah. Like I get. I like the earth is pulling me tighter to the ground. So when I kind of get it dialed in, you know, by I just walk and I'd, well, I'd feel it and I'd go ac- and I'd keep going and then I'd go, okay, well, it's back there somewhere. Mm-hmm. And then I'd go over and walk across. And it's kind of sort of like, um, you know, when someone uses the sticks or the wires to find water, mm-hmm. that's how it feels to me. It's like, and then down. So it, to me, it's like a, it's a, chakra of the earth or mm-hmm. an energy portal it's, it's like something's happening here mm-hmm. that's gives human beings a vehicle the system the yeah. body like the body more access to the divine more access to itself more access to mother earth do you think that's why everybody had crazy sessions in here yeah i had one session and the guy was flipping around so much that he he kicked his shoe off and damn near hit that wall. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a dent or something. And I was like, i have never seen that before. And I was like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So I didn't say anything when I suggested you use this spot, but I just wanted to get the feedback when you're done. Like, yeah. how, were they more intense? Did, like, did people see beings? Because a lot of beings are coming and going through this portal. I, you know, I, I did have several people say that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And my wife, she had some, because, you know, I used to give her sessions here, you know, mm-hmm. before we moved. Right. And she would have those kind of experiences. Uh, but, you know, they also have those experiences, like, in the in a warehouse yeah, in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Of course. Like, so, it just, like, a, know. it just opens more potential is all. Yeah. It, it, some spots have more potential and some have less. Yeah. And it's kind of, you know. Your third eye has more energy going than you know the side of your head, or yeah. you come more energy's coming out of your heart than it is yeah. your elbow. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Like, yeah, um, and then the main verification that I got 
about that was I brought this lady here that does uh, spiritual coaching. She's a like a visionary. She hear auditory and you know and seeing. She just sees other dimensions and and has conversations with beings, and that's what she does for a living. Yeah. And and she comes to the groups I hold here, and uh, so I said just feel the energy of, you know, where we're walking and yeah. tell me when you notice something. I didn't say where it was. I just yeah. kind of started walking around the whole property yeah. and not kind of almost misleading yeah. her at first to like see when she noticed it. And as soon as we started getting close to here, she goes, oh, something's going on. Really? And then she kept saying, oh, it's getting stronger and it's stronger and it's stronger. And then she started kind of like shaking a little bit. And then I said, yeah, this is the spot. Yeah. And right then, we both turned around like we were facing this direction and we turned around towards the house to yeah. look back in this falcon whose wings were as wide as this couch. That's right. I remember that story. Came down to <laughs> head, head level. <laughs> yeah. I remember you telling right. me this story. And, I mean, I've never seen a falcon fly at <laughs> human beings before, especially two of them. Yeah. And he's coming at us at head level and about 20 feet from us. Just like threw those wings out and went, <laughs> <laughs> like third flap and his wings like stalled out in the air. Yeah, yeah. And I was making that screeching sound. Yeah. And I could feel the air <laughs> from the wings on my hair. Wow. Like that's how close yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, wow. And then it and it just looked us right in the eyes and then just flew off. <laughs> and she this this lady, she like literally just like I think it overloaded her nervous yeah. system. And she started stomping her feet like a two-year-old and like going in circles. And then she looked at me and she's like, did you see that? And I was like, oh my God, you really kind of lost it. Because I, I did see that. I did see that too. Yeah. I felt the wind on my hair and the whole That's thing. That's dope. When it was right when I was saying, this is a special place or some strong energy here. Yeah. That's right when that happened. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's stuff with birds here because right when I got reconnected, I remember one night I woke up and um, I had this unbelievable dream about this eagle. Right. Did I tell you that? Yeah. Had this dream and I was with this eagle and this dude was just kicking down mm -hmm. every all the knowledge that I needed to know. And as soon as I woke up, it was so vivid. I was like, oh my God. I started telling my wife. I was like, you're not going to believe this conversation I had with this eagle. Right. You know what I mean? And she's like. It was just one of those mornings, like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Can you go take the dogs out? You know what I mean? <laughs> it was You're like, like, oh, nice story. That would be a great story. I'm glad you had a tremendous dream. <laughs> the dogs, but, uh, go. dogs need to go out. <laughs> and so I go to the back door up there, and um, right as I open the door, there's a tree right beside the driveway. Like and 20 feet. Yeah, 15, even 15 feet. 15 feet. 15 feet maybe. And there's an eagle in that tree just sitting there looking at me. And that tree's only like, 12 feet tall. It's not big. It's not a big It's tree. not an eagle tree. No, it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's an, not eagle an eagle tree. It's not an eagle tree, dude. That eagle was waiting for me to confirm that something happened. Right. That was real. Yeah, that was an that, affirmation. That was an absolutely that was like, real. Universe wanted to say, absolutely do not discount the information you just got. And yeah. here's the proof. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and like you said, something is with birds here. There's a falcon that sits in this tree. Uh -huh. Almost every day, and the other day he caught a rabbit or something and landed in the yard, like where the sprinklers are. Yeah, like that's just bizarre. Yeah, like that's just not something they do. And, and ate the whole thing while I watched it. And when we first moved here, um, again it was my daughter, and she said, "There's this big bird leaning on the door." <laughs> and I'm like, "What do you mean a big bird?" And she's yeah. like, "A big bird." Yeah. And I'm like, "Well, do something." Yeah. Like, I can't see what it wants. She's yeah. like, Dad, it's like up to my knee. Oh, wow. And so there was a hawk on the front steps, and he was like leaning on the door like this. <laughs> if he opened the door, he would have fell in. Wow. And he That's had, crazy. And he had a broken wing. Oh. And he literally came in the house when he opened the door. Wow. Holy shit. So. You know, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I remember this. Um, I read a book one time. It was one of my favorite books. It was called Return of the Birds Tribe. Yeah. Birdman or Birds Tribe? Return of the Bird Tribes. Re Return of the Bird Tribes. I'm reading this, man. It's just resonating so strongly with me. Mm -hmm. And then Travis comes over to 
take a look at the house to see if he's going to buy the house. And we're sitting there talking, and I looked in your car, and you had that book right. in, in the front seat of your car. And I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. Because I had I'd never met anybody that had also read that. And so that was cool. So back to your story. And, and that book, like, sticks with me because of the thing with the birds, some. But mostly, like, it, when it when it in its teaching and in its revelation and its, like, whole story, mm -hmm. it keeps coming back to the innocence of humanity. Keeps, it's like that's its like baseline. And one line said, like when uh, this Native American, before he was incarnating in to like be more or less the Native American version of Jesus, mm -hmm. he said, Oh, what was his name? Uh, it was the teacher of Hiawatha. Yes, okay, so okay. So it's Hiawatha's yeah. teacher. Yes, 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 yes. And so this, he said, what we were being instructed to do was to go into the most fiercest tribes in the most densest reality and our whole mission was to remain as innocent as we could. Wow. I forgot that. And so, for me... That's what we're doing here in America, dude. Right. <laughs> in the same place. It might have been here. <laughs> on the prairie. That's dope. Um, so, for me, I just started noticing that in all the religious texts everywhere, modern teachers, old teachers, like... At the, the last part, the last thing they'd have to say, like they write a whole book, mm -hmm. the last few pages were about innocence. Yeah, so, being childlike. So everything would, like they'd almost have to build it all up to reveal the thing they were trying to get to. It's like if, if we could just get you to your original innocence, yeah. you wouldn't have to read these first 300 pages. Yeah. You just read yeah. the last paragraph. Yes, yes. The last totally. chapter. So then I started going, well, what if, what if we just, what if there's a way to just remember our innocence and reconnect with it. Yeah. And skip all that other bullshit. Yeah. You know, I've made like three videos on that. One of them was, um, I heard a quote by Eric Pearl, and he said that, um, you know, a child comes into this world as an empty vessel, mm -hmm. and we feel like our job is to fill that vessel with everything we know. Right. Let's just take all of our bullshit and just fill that up. Send them to school. Make Send them to school. Things. Yeah, yeah, just, Learn just something. yeah, yeah. Memorize a bunch of stuff that, that really is not relevant and didn't really happen. But his point was is um, maybe the child comes as an empty vessel to remind us that we're supposed to be an empty vessel. Right. And uh, I think that ties in with what you just said. Yeah. For sure. It's what I experienced then in like a a meditation or a dream or other state was that through one lifetime which is what wasn't seemingly intended intended for us or maybe infinite amount of lifetimes like we get this chance to come in as this innocence right mm -hmm. and then gain experience and through experience become masterful of this realm because we're already masterful of realms that are less dense than this. Yeah. So then we become, the innocence of a child becomes the innocence of a sage. Yeah. And if you see both ends of the spectrum, right, pe human beings are really innocent when they're young, and then they're really innocent when they're over it, when they're like they're towards the end, when yeah. they're like starting to age, when they're yeah. on their deathbed, they, be they become innocent again. Hopefully. Yeah. It's often. Often. And you see that, right? And then the other thing about innocence is that uh, everything embraces it. Like yeah, if you see, yeah, 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 if you see a baby or a puppy, like you're just you just want to yeah, hug it. And yeah. you're just feeling like I want to gobble it up and eat yeah. it. Like you want to even like take it in. Yeah. So innocence yeah. innocence uh, opens all gates and all doors and all protection. In this dimension and all dimensions. Yeah. So if your nature is innocent, when you stand at whatever door is in front of you, no matter what dimension it is, or when the person's like egoic and very defensive, if you're completely innocent, it doesn't set off any other protection. Yeah. It doesn't give them the, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I have to push. Yep, totally. And I have to save myself from you, or you're guilty, or... So yeah. So it's, like it's like this uh, master key. Yeah. Never thought about that way. That makes perfect sense. It, like it unlocks all the locks. Yeah, just defuses everybody's defenses. Right. Yeah. 
and and so like you said we all get filled up so then then you have to go through these spiritual mumbo jumbo and teachings and paths to get emptied out <laughs> yeah and as soon as you're emptied out yeah all that stuff that you went through is useless yeah right yeah, it's no totally. longer useful to you because it's all about emptying you out yep totally right so you're back to your your true essence your true nature your innocence and then and then you have all the life experience too to like be a guide for everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think now that we've done this a thousand times and this is the time that we're supposed to remember that we can just that process of becoming innocent again can be sped up? Yeah. That's my experience. And that's the thing I'm trying to share with everyone. And the the website I have is even what is your website? It's called Alchemy of Innocence. Alchemy of Innocence. And so, like, what I noticed is, like, in that being innocent, when you're having the perspective of innocence, yep. and then you see everything else the same way. Even if they're being a jerk, or even if they're jealous, or you see that the innocence behind it, mm-hmm. that it was, it learned this stuff, it was taught this stuff, and it hasn't unlearned it yet. Yeah. It has this baggage and these hurts and all these but underneath it's innocent and so you you don't respond any weird way either right you're mm-hmm. seeing yeah. it's innocence the perspective of innocence just meets everything as it is and doesn't want them to be any different doesn't want to change them yeah just um it is, what it is. sort of wise and loving without yeah. trying yeah and so then this alchemical thing happens is what i call this alchemy is just by them being in your presence, it's like that vibration goes through them because it doesn't set off any of their defenses yep. or ego. Yep. So then it, it, it connects with their innocence, which is still there. Yep. And then it invites it out to play. Yes. All right? It's beautiful. Because play, innocence is like, to me, the best, the easiest qualities to note about it are that it's playful and curious. Yep. So when somebody says, like, follow your bliss, I'd say, Follow your curiosity. Yeah. The thing you're most curious about. That, that's yeah. what's most alive in yeah. you, right? Because that, that is your innocence. highest excitement. Yeah. So innocence is like the most alive part. Yep. Yeah. And it and it doesn't have any pre-programming. So if you can see it like the innocent, you know, like all the versions of you from like a two year old to a to your till your deathbed. Mm-hmm. Like your let's say eighty. Like would be seamless every moment seamless to get there right? and you can have all of them like kind of like together like a train like each one's a slice yep and the one in the back is the sage that has returned to innocence after having all this life experience and in the front is the one and a half year old yeah who has no programming yeah just is curious about everything so he gets to like lead the being the little train Mm-hmm. But the sage gets to say when we move forward and how fast. Oh, nice. So that, Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so That's the, really in, good. that innocent part's going like this, and like, I want to play with that, and let's check this out. And, yeah. And then the wisdom that's been gained through experience says, no, we're not going for that. No, no. Yep, that's it. And then it gets to move fast. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like when there aren't any hurdles and nothing's in your way. You've experienced yeah. that, like, all of a sudden everything falls together. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So it's like this cooperation between untainted experience I mean innocence untainted innocence and fully experienced masterful innocence yeah wow right they're like yeah they're like one being yeah right? I like that and then it moves really quick when it moves and sometimes it doesn't move for a long time yeah just like checks things out yeah I think we've all experienced right. <laughs> the right. non-moving yeah, yeah. what the fuck yeah. Like, oh my god. Like, now what? Now, oh yeah. <laughs> but half of that's from fear. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. that part that is innocent again has no fear. Yeah. Yeah. It, no. it, 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 already, it already picked up. It's through, meant through lifetimes and lifetimes and multi dimensions and planets. It's already like picked everything up and stuck it up its nose and tasted it and like wanged it on the wall. Yeah. Like, it's already done it. Mm-hmm. So it remembers. But, uh, yeah.
Yeah, it was like a spiritual menage a trois or something going on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. But the four, four, or five, the fit with a couple angels. A couple angels and I. Six. So is that... Is